Hello everyone, this is Harris Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Shisia Let's Play. We continue for episode 10 from turn 93 in the harvest season of 218. So last time we wrapped up our war out west. We pretty much ran into factions that we cannot buy land from anymore. Uh, surprisingly, their capital is in Chang'an, so we actually have easy access to Tal Tal's territory if we ever want that. Uh, it's not an emperor's seat, so there's really no value. Capital of Ma Teng's faction, capital of Han Chong's faction, former Han Sui. And we also bought up all the land that Zhang Lu has. I think the only target we can buy up a bit more land is Liu Bei. So we'll do a little bit of that, but we're going to be ramping up our deployment out uh, east as we want to attack Sun Ce next. So let's see, we can buy up his iron mine here and we can give him some of the chests that we just picked up and maybe a stone pig, uh, maybe a low tier weapon, although we still need quite a few. Uh, there's a good chance we are going to produce a bunch of good weapons in the future, so it should be okay. And the rest will just be a big cash payment. Which we can... Oh, he is asking for a lot. A lot of money, actually. 50k plus. Which, to us, is about a turn of income. Less than a turn of income here. Probably 51. And maybe change. All right, we'll do this deal. Uh, maybe we can do a food in there just to reduce some of the money because it is getting a little bit ridiculous and we do have a lot of food. Yeah, saved us about 4,000 there. Now, I don't know if he's going to sell me Badong. It's only level 3, so it's not that well built. 43, still quite expensive for being a capital. We'll see what we can buy. Xiaoyang's for sale. Hmm. Wuling, it's very cheap. Xiaoyang is also very cheap. They don't value toolmakers. Well, we do. So let's buy these. We can throw in. Kind of running out of items to trade. I don't really want to give him any other chests. We can maybe do all cash payment. It would be expensive, but like I said. We make way too much to care. Alright, so it's about here. Since we're not going to go to war with him anytime soon, we might as well be buying his land. Especially a piece of Wuling, which we can use as part of our commander. We also help start deploying the army up from this point. Don't have to come down and up afterwards. There's going to be army here. wonder if we can buy this eventually, the Armorsmith. We have to border it somehow. Ling Ling, maybe the Lumberyard here for sale. Way path. That's too expensive. That's also probably going to be too expensive. Just going to price check here. Way path is out of the question. Xiaoyang's toolmaker, very cheap. The farm isn't that bad. He's willing to sell a farmland to us. We can complete Wuling this way. And maybe buy the Armorsmith next. I really wish we had more chests. We could buy one more chest, I guess. It would just be one turn of issues. We don't get the bonus at this point. 
Uh, honestly, we could buy another chest because we don't need the 10% trade influence and we'll be bumped back to the highest tier afterwards anyways. Because you lose the bonus at the threshold line. So we're going to complete Wuling here through this purchase. We'll give him both of the diplomat chests. And the rest will just be a big payment. Okay, 50k it is. It's getting cheaper. He doesn't know what to do with all this money. And this might be something like 800. Uh, much more than that, okay. Now can we buy the armor smith? Yes, we can. It's going to be cheap, or relatively cheap. You know, the more money he has, the less he knows what to do with it. Let's do... 9... 250... There we go. This is probably going to be like 2,500. Close. We're buying most of his southern land. This is becoming quite a financial flex. This is available now. That's too expensive. That might be available. Buy his tea. See what's cheap. Everything's cheap. Xiaoyang is the cheapest. He's willing to give us this piece here because he doesn't own the complete commandery, which is why I think he's selling it for cheap. Uh, we can basically bypass this crossing and launch armies down the central plain once we do purchase that. That's the attractive part of that. Badung's farm would be uh, lumberyard would be here. Also, not a bad grab. Ling Ling Nanping right here. So I think we can buy both of these and extend our border with Sun Ce so that we can launch armies from both locations instead of sailing down here, having an army go here, and not being able to reach these. So I guess that would be the most strategically important territory, I guess, would be how we want to phrase that. But I think we're buying all of these. They're all very cheap. We still have to be 49. Liu Bei is just getting very rich. And since we're not fighting him, he's going to be using that against our enemies, technically. Everyone's the enemy. This can't be that expensive. Twenty-two point nine. Na I mean, having all that cash sitting there doesn't do us any good. He's much less demanding now. It's 44k. He's like, you paid us enough. running out of things that we can buy there's only two left but we might open up more territory as we buy them so let's see 42 how about we push it here not enough 44 we know is enough 35 750 maybe yep 
And then this is probably 3,000. Oh, doesn't want that much money anymore. Can't buy Tribi because it's on the other side of the capital. So it seems like this is the only piece we can buy now. Oh, it's gone way down. It doesn't even want that much money. 33k. And this is probably like 500. 800, okay. You want anything else? Oh, Huarong. It's a food producing county though. He might say no to that or might make it super expensive. Yeah, I don't think I'm paying that price. But yeah, we expanded quite a bit. We isolated his settlement here. We'll just take one army to take care of. We have the borders against Sun Quan that we would want. And then we can launch attacks much deeper, targeting Poyang directly, Yuzhang, Ruling, Nanhai. So we just have to get enough armies on this side. That is a long march. Let's get him over here quicker. They're missing one. We don't have that many deployable positions, so or three slots each turn. It's going to be a little bit difficult to get enough manpower here. Uh, trade influence is good, but I'm just going to not depend on that in the future in case we don't have enough trades or not enough partners for trades. We're going to find them both a husband and a wife, and we'll see what things look like in case we get a strategist or not. Arrange marriage for you. Arrange marriage for you. Big family tree. It's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Did we get a strategist for any of you? You got a commander wife. And you got a sentinel husband. No strategist. That is going to be a slight problem. We can reattempt the marriage, or we can cancel some of these assignments and have her come out and fight with us. That'd be better, I guess. We can summon two this turn anyway, so it's going to be fine. We will do our son. Or well, actually, this is grandson? Sure, she has grandson. And then his wife. And they're just going to wait for their strategist to get there. And they will have a force. Uh, the bad part about this army will be everyone's rank 1. So we're going to be a little weak. We might swap just to get the wall bonus. Yeah, I guess we can do this for both. It's not a bad boost. Alright, we have a lot of new land. Um, I'm not going to mind the upgrade time for these. They're not complete territories, so it's not really going to matter. One build slot in most of those places. Get that leveled up. That is tier 5. Good. Our new Armorsmith, I believe, is also upgraded. That's good. Yunnan. Let's finish some of these things up. Do we have someone here? We do. Uh, they could actually join a force. They don't have the chest right now. I think we do give them that chest, have her finish up, and then just get out of this area. So Yunnan could use this last round of upgrade. This needs to go. Uh, new buildings are usually pretty quick early on. 
Also, not sure what we're going to build here. I think government support and maybe go for income and then military forge. Get this built first. This is rather quick. We can send her elsewhere. Our supply depletion will continue. So keeping this army here is actually the only way for us to gain positive public order. So we're just going to stay put to make sure they can't do anything. We're a little over deployed on this side. Like one army here is good. But we don't need two armies here. Not even sure if we need an army here. Zhang Wu fights us? No, Cao Cao's more likely to fight us. Get an army to the other side here. So they're going to be in Jamun Path. They're going to be in Meixian. This army in Shangyong. Hmm. Not sure if that's needed. Might be better to be here. So when that time comes, we can quickly take Kui Path and Badong. Alright, I think we're in a good position. They're also going to be a problem in the future. They canceled the trade with us. They just have some problems. Let's see, what can we do with them? I could promise I'll never annex you. And that'll be a free deal to get the trending in the positive direction. Then what else can we promise you? Can give you food. For free. You want to fight for us? They're very poor. A little bit of money will go a long way. We can make it a nice fortuitous number. And we're trending towards positive. We can do a couple rounds of this. Trending to 81. Although working this hard on someone who's defiant might not be very smart. But I want him in the green. Uh, let's offer him a little bit of money as well. Want it to be about 15 points. I can also tell him not going to ever kill you. All right, we got at least green faces everywhere trending positively. All right, we did a lot of minor diplomatic things to get us in the right place going forward. And the next few turns we'll be pumping out armies. Oh, let's see. Ba. We want corruption reduction, more food is correct, tea is correct, spice is good. I uh, really would like to get the speed up here in Ba. We recalled one, we could wait a turn, oh she's here, she's, hold on, we, we got this. She needs to be in a better stance, just burning away her supplies, it's quick. 
Shu doesn't need her. Jiayan doesn't need her. All right, we're good. Let's continue. Two new birth and one more coming of age. Weapons are pumping now. Uh, let's see what we can do. We can set up another marriage for our newest coming of age family member. I have to find her. Not sure where the next kid is. Where are you? On our massive family tree. Oh no. Uh Huh. Oh, you're here. Wait. We have someone who's not in the family with our family name who came of birth in our faction. That is a little bit confusing. I can adopt her. That is really wrong, but uh, we might have to do that. I mean, the alternative is to promote incest or refire her. She's a burn officer. Okay, we're not firing her. Um, awkward. Adoption? Feels really weird to adopt someone with our name, but I guess we adopt her? So she's here now. It's decent, but I don't really want double commanders. So I think this is going to be a divorce and fire situation. We'll look for another husband next turn. Alright, we need to get some strategists. I'm not going to give her a chest as well. Two chests is more than enough. I also don't think we're going to go juggernauts everywhere. I think we can go a few armies without them. That way I don't have to get any shield units. Uh, what else do we want on her? All calves are... These are not that great. That's the thing. We could run more archers. She can also get Fire Arrow down the line. Alright. And then we can also set up army over here. I don't like her husband. Honestly, I don't really like her stat either. But they can be decent, you know, assignment characters. I'm not gonna, or like, we can make her into a vassal in the future. 
So it's not the worst. They can set sail a bit later. Uh, who are we going to summon? We need a strategist. I was going to dump her to do the industrialist chest, but we really need strategists, so she's going to have to come out here and be a part of an army somewhere. And then they work together, that's fine. And we'll find them a third next turn. Hopefully more kids come of age or the marriage works out a bit better next turn. We probably one army here to march there, one army here. Well this army actually yeah, we can march from here into Luling. One army here. One army here. That's plenty for now. We just need to field one more group. This is our faction leader. Last couple turns with her with this. Mm. Do we need to go tall everywhere? I guess we we can, and we just might as well make that the thing for this campaign. Technically, I don't think I need to go up here. I feel like this might be the better play. Because we get to wipe out Zhang Lu immediately and then turn around afterwards, we still have plenty of time. This can be a, a march directly to location. And if they ever have a problem, it's going to be the war against Ma Teng here. Ba needs nobody, actually. That's why that strategist doesn't need to do anything. Any buildings going up here this turn? Nope. Any building going up this? Nope. We can be inside and get some supplies. Let's see what we can build. Go regional city. You heard chest timeout? No. It just takes a while now. Spice. This is actually quicker. This gets done. We have a few sentinels around that can give a farther boost. We have someone there. I don't think we're building out anywhere else that we can send an assignment to. Asi's almost done. Yeah, we're good to go. I wonder if Sun Tzu will sell me land. He doesn't like me, but that would be another option for us to extend our borders with him. Ooh. Quite a beauty. Why does he have this horse? He was also wounded recently. The 
problem we're going to run into is this very inexperienced army. It's going to be running up against some very experienced stuff. And that might cause some problems. Like he hates us, so the prices here might not be good. But who knows? Worth a try. 29.9. It's doable. Is it worth it? Probably not. We can take it by force, so not going to do that. Pick up some trade ammo. No one came of age. So this is where things we try the marriage setup again. See if we can find someone more suitable, like a champion or a vanguard husband. Strategist. Not gonna say no to a strategist. Just not what we were looking for. I mean, if this is the case, we can either run her or we go double sentinels and just go heavy range. We would have to cancel this and then he's a bot. So we kind of messed it up. We should have just done the buildings at bot first with the bonus. Then we're gonna also have to swap him there. Can we on cancel? No, we cannot. Okay. Yikes. Let's just queue this up. Alright, so this would be heavy range, I guess. Be weird. Crossbow range would be the best setup for that. Not quite ready for this war. We also want to run an army with him. But we need more kids. How is our supply doing? Three more turns where we have no supply. We're going to keep them around then. Yunnan, right, forge and government support. Become vassals of Liu Zhang? Is he joking? He has an army standing in the middle of nowhere. Wait, this value with Cao Cao? We're positive 53. We can lower his opinion down to 55. It'd be negative 2 actually once we get this through. And then we just force the ultimatum. We can actually absorb Cao Cao entirely here. A very aggressive move. That's not enough. He's on the far side of the map. See, this is positive. This is going to be 2.9 once we get this deal through. We pick up this entire chunk of land and we have a border with both Shu Han and the High Empire right away. Yuan Tan might be a great opening for us. So in essence, we just have to fix this to positive 150 with, with promise of cash flow, and then we annex him. And this will speed up this campaign by leaps and bounds. 
We'll still do our attack against Sun Tzu first, get ourselves in pursuit, then surprise both of them right after. It'd be a relatively short war at that point. So basically, we would find the value where this is 15. Oh my god, he's so poor. 2300, 20, something, something nice and easy to type. 23, 2400. And we would just dump these promises to him? Oh, this is going to be ridiculous. I'm gonna make it way over 150 so that when we start giving him these one coins he's gonna go towards the trending terminal value a little bit faster let's do like one more of these And then we start giving him one coin at a time. Alright, he loves us now. And we have a free confederate. Now, does he have any items or anything that we can get from him before we do this? Nope. Oh, he has land in the north? We got a lot of stuff. And we got to fire a lot of people. Uh, first things first. Jones Young's there. Poor girl. Yuan Tan. These two are unique. We're definitely not able to keep them. Everyone else, if they're not like a burn officer. See, she will try to maybe marry into the clan. Aside from that, everyone else will get purged. Let's see. Yuan Tan surprisingly is a distant relative through weird marriage setups somehow with different factions. Zheng Jiang is also a distant relative. So we can technically keep her if we want. This is Yuan Tan's wife. But we don't really want to. Kind of want to see what units they have. Zheng Jiang has gone. They're gone. Where's the other stack? Where's that burn officer? Oh, that's our burn officer that I disarmed. Oops. We'll give you your items back quickly. Yeah, it's kind of mixed bag all over the place. So basically everyone can get fired. Because I was clicking down from here. This is also our... We disarmed all our strategists for... <laughs> Very poor reasons. My bad. You... Uh, gotta do it here. Well, Zheng Xiang's gone first. We know we can't keep her. And Yuan Tan's gone as well. We know we can't keep him. Like a dead giveaway is they're not married. Everyone in our clan is married. <laughs> yeah, she... 
we can actually keep her because she is related. Do we want to keep her? She's court assignment, basically. Wow, we got a lot of land. T, demolish. Uh, we can go tall and keep this, that's fine. Spice market, bay height, demolish, upgrade, long yacht, demolish, demolish. Uh, yes, it's gonna be food, city build. Alright, uh, that was a surprise find. I didn't think we can get access to our future enemy's land this easily. And we can actually buy up some of the base territories here as well. Alright, we're basically bordering his capital now. We can put an army here and attack this in one turn. We can buy up multiple pieces of land to attack Liu Bei in one turn. And then against Sun Tzu, uh, technically we can inch closer to him as well. Let's go back to Diplomacy. Let's see what else we can play around with, with Confederation values. Wasn't expecting that one to be that low. Tzu is actually surprisingly low too. I think this can be something that's possible later on once we get more armies on the field. UNC looks like a positive value as well. 72, Gaokan. Zhang Lu, oh, Zhang Lu's negative 18? But Zhang Lu already likes us, that's the thing, that's the difference. He's ready, he should be in single digit for this to be possible. Yeah, this is not possible. This here is positive. So technically I can grab all this in one go. And then we complete Xiangyang. And we extend ourselves. We also weaken the High Empire by taking away their vassals. Golgan is a yes as well. Doesn't have much though. Yuanxi I think is a yes as well. Yeah, we can actually grab Yuanxi. This doesn't work. He has a splinter faction so we can't confederate. Alright, this is not possible. This is very possible, but he has very limited land from what I remember. He's in Lujiang. It's not terrible, ter it's not that bad. Right, this is super positive. Where is... I mean, we're trading with them, they just have Xingdu plus something else, I guess. That's not their capital, so... UNC is the one that I kind of want now. I'll get all this northern stretch, including a horse pasture. And we just got your brother. And you, unlike your brother, can actually stay in my faction. And there's a chance he's actually... ...distant relative as well, because if his brother is, he definitely is as well. Before we do that, though, I think Leosi could use a administrator that we can give away, so this can be a vassal territory. Because I don't need to keep this land here. We can just buffer it, and we can keep this piece later on. Once we take this, and we can trade with them afterwards. So I don't need to. I don't need to change any of the buildings. The AI can keep them. We need to fire one of our administrators, preferably someone who's in the field. Yulian Jiaozhi, preferably also a commander that I don't really want to be administered over. Like Wu Ling doesn't need administrator down the line. So we're gonna dismiss you. Maybe a little bit sad, but not that sad. 
Oh, who are we going to send out? One of our new family members, I guess. Who's not on the field? Oh, we could send out Yuan Tan's wife, who is a distant relative. But I prefer to send out, like, maybe her? She is uh, Liu Qi's daughter. We adopted Liu Qi, so that makes her part of the family. Wait. She's a burn officer. Wow, she should be on the field. Okay, take that back. Yeah, we, we could send her out. She's not... It's not classified as a member of the Shirk family. It's one of those bug issues where they're distant relative. They're not really considered family. We don't get points for her, which is a downside. But, like, who are we going to give away in this case we could give away like the new girl she hasn't she hasn't picked up a, a army yet I, I wanted her to pick up an army but maybe maybe this is not meant to be we basically keep her husband here with us she married a sentinel I believe All right no really good traits definitely part of the family that's probably a good choice Um, let's see. We can trade with them. We can give them a little bit of food. Do I want their stone pig? How much are they charging for it? 6.6. .6. I don't really want it. We get 15 here. We don't need to keep that. And for this, I'll take this. We'll give you some startup capital. Most importantly, we'll give her this deal. And she's going to adore us after that. You still like us? He still likes us. Wait, is the 2.9? Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll just do 5,000 because we're never going to actually pay him. It's going up so slowly. Do you have any items by any chance? No, just checking. Jersey 
Alright, one more payment. And all that land will be ours. Alright, gotta look at his army group. He is distant family, but we're still gonna strip him of his items. Um, we will let him stay. He doesn't have his wife with him, which means the High Empire probably asked him to give his wife. It's okay, we have territory where we can run him out. Your wife is right. Oh, right. His wife is Lady Jen. <laughs> She's part of the Han faction. That's that's how things are. Yeah, you see, UNCNs, you don't automatically think Lady Jen is his wife. All right, he has one family member here. Probably adopted son is what I'm guessing. Because they stole his wife so early. His other generals, also family. Yuan Xiu, Shi Sun. She's not. She will get fired. Is that the only stack he has? So his only army is there to defend his vassal leader. She's gone. Uh, wrong menu. Oh, there's a there's a few more. There's another stack somewhere. Where are your armies? No. Oh, they're here. Oh, got stuck. Might have a crash. Alrighty, so we did have a crash as one of the character panels did crash the game. I think after too much confederation, the system was having a bit of issue. So I went ahead and redid the turn, and I did a few more things. So we did pick up Yuntan's territory again, UNC's territory again, made the same vassal, and also gave them uh, basically a trade deal and everything, free land over here. I also went ahead and vassalized Zhang Xiu, when vassalized Li Shu, vassalized Wu Jing's former faction. So we have a bunch of land, and we pretty much dominate the map. And we have, let's see how many territory this is in total. We now have 65 counties. So a good chunk, and we have access to pretty much all three Emperor's seat pretty easily. We have one right here that can attack the High Empire directly. We have a couple pieces of land that I bought from Nobe afterwards. So we bought Dong, we bought Long Yat, and we are basically inches away from Xia Pi. Still have to go through a few settlements. Uh, on this side, Cao Cao still kind of blocks us, so unless we are able to vassalize him, not much we can do about that. Down here, we picked up Li Shu's territory, which gives us access to Sun Ce's land in the north of the Yangtze River. We'll send an army there to clean that up once we get the war ready to go. And then we also picked up Xingdu, which gives us access to multiple points, uh, including his capital over here. And we'll basically send two or three armies here. And in terms of getting the characters for the armies, I kept everyone who's distantly related. So Yuan Xi's clan is with us. He has a couple of sons and brothers with him. Uh, I think these are all adopted sons, even though the age is all messed up. I married off every single one of them, got a few strategists. Uh, the classes are not great because we have a bunch of Sentinels, Champions, and strategists, but not really any Vanguard or Champions, which I prefer in the army. But we'll make a couple of range heavy armies and just go with sheer number uh, to win here. You can see they're not classified as a member of our clan, but they're still distant relative. Just the issue with that, that's fine. I'm also going to set up uh, Shi Yan here who is a family member, to take over as the a minister of Donglai, and then we're going to give them independence, and then we'll increase the trade partner with them, uh, similar to what we did up north. Basically, port town, not a lot of adjacencies for corruption reductions, not a lot of high value for us, and we lost trade partners by, you know, absorbing all these factions that we were trading with. Uh, Liu Bei's land's all over the place, but basically we bought everything that's not really a major settlement, and he doesn't have any uh, food left, so we can't really buy any of his food locations. Uh, he's overleveled. Uh, he does have True B, which I think we can buy. He's the only one on the map who still kind of likes us, so all these deals are still 
very doable and we do have some cash left over we spent a lot of it and that's okay uh, having those cash sit around doesn't do us any good so we might as well spend them it's a lot of money there and we have a lot of stone pigs from all of these deals that we did and we can give those away and maybe uh, I don't want to give a chest away stone rooster anything else random horse uh, we didn't give the armor away we can give this away it's not a really good weapon and that's gonna do it let's drop the money a little bit essentially all the money we saved were spent this turn as we bought the map essentially and Liu Bei basically just have a few major settlements that we can easily take afterwards so things are looking pretty good we're gonna end turn here and let the game get a save point for us I think all the armies are positioned where are they this one yeah we're one step away from wiping out Zhang Lu in the future we can march to here they're still waiting for this to expire. If we want to declare war, we should do it in the summer season. Uh, I don't even know if we're going to do it in the summer season. It might be later than that. But essentially, we want to wait till spring is over before we declare war so we don't have to deal with any nonsense from faction council. When it does hit, they're good. They can ambush. Yeah, we were able to squeeze in this assignment before we cancel it, which is a mistake we did earlier. I'm going to cancel it regardless. I think for most of our locations now, we're going to actually go around without any assignment so we can see which characters we need to make armies, which is what's important right now. Uh, even characters like her, I think we can recall building speed up is no longer really a priority for us. We, you know, have enough of that ready to go get our faction leader back as well they're gonna be starting an army here we give them independence so that's why they're on the field Zhang Xiu is stuck in enemy territory until next turn so I'm gonna summon him back he's the only vanguard piece we picked up he's also distantly related through some weird marriage setup uh, between other factions which put us as relatives but essentially we are looking really good so let's continue here I also paid off most of my vassals so they love us. And the High Empire basically wakes up one day and, you know, checks the report. It's like, wait, Yuan Tan's no longer part of our subject. Yuan Xi also left us. Zhang Xiu also left us. And the only two factions that had no relations with anyone, the Shu and Wu Jing's former faction, all joined uh, our coalition member. Uh, Liu Zhang attacking them? Yeah, sure. We can attack. Uh, we're defending our vassals, so this kind of cancels each other out. That's fine. It's a very, you know, terrible setup here. Bongzu will declare war on us. Okay, sure. We have no armies nearby, so this might get a little bit ugly in the beginning, but we'll get whatever land we lose back. And a good reason for us to get these three pieces and connect our territories. Uh, they do try to take our land, but they've been attritioning so much that it's basically the end of Liu Zhang's faction. Or not the end yet. Oh, actually, no, they're done. We pick up the weapon. Thank you very much. And they paid us a little bit. Bongzul's issue, we're going to have to summon force up there. Maton has died. Okay, it uh, doesn't really matter. Liu Zhang's wiped. Ma Chao's available. Um, well, we can only hire him for the items. Oh, he ended up with a unique item. But that's about it. We can't keep him. He is unique. Uh, we have a war with Huangzhu's faction. I guess what happens is basically Zhang Xiu comes out to Runa, we give him a force, and he will lead that army to wipe them out. Uh, Sun Tzu is kind of wandering around, not sure what we should do with him. We also want to arm an army in Hefei. 
Um, also want to arm arm here. There's a lot of deployments. I think we did get a conscription building up north, which is nice as part of all the wheeling and dealing that we got. So that's going to be nice. I don't know if with Ma Teng's death, is there a possibility that we can maybe also absorb his faction? Maybe it's a weaker setup. They don't like us, right, which is a big issue. We don't have enough points. Uh, if we get stronger in terms of military strength, we could swallow them up. They have land all the way to Sihu, which it's a nice pickup if we can get that. It's a lot of land, and we don't have to do very much for that. The only other character that we might be able to look to pick up is Cao Cao, but he seems to be quite strong with his military. If we can raise our military value just by about four points, we can swallow him up, which would also be a giant score for us because he has territories here as well, all these, and that would put us really on the borders with uh, Liu Bei's faction. And we could potentially set up a situation where we take all three seats in one turn, lightning strike on all three factions that might be a pretty way like pretty fun way to end things uh basically we sped up this campaign by hours by absorbing all these land through diplomacy and we have the option of absorbing more so a quick little war with Huangzhou here not in a rush to uh start things with kingdom of Wu. we have many many more kids coming of age very very soon and that's gonna get us the army that we need essentially she's what 14 within two years 13 12 and then we have a bunch over here. Uh, the, the tree's out of control. 10, 10, 0. New kid. She's 14, 12. Within, within two years, I would say there's at least four or five characters that will come of age. And when they come of age, they will have, you know, a spouse. And then we are basically going to expand from there. Those are relatively new marriages. She's 15, she's he's 13. Yeah, there, there's just endless amount of kids. 15, 16, she's almost of age uh, within a few seasons. He's 15, 15. Yeah, we just have so many kids. And essentially, we'll have a bunch of army. Our economy is still solid. Of course, absorbing all this territory really ups our corruption. And then we're going to have to use our reform to kind of counteract that. There's a couple things we're looking for. Probably trying to get to this copper mine. I think we own all the copper mine on the field after buying we'll do all we're missing one in Poyang, but essentially we have almost all of them so within 10 turns another five turns actually we'll pick up all the corruption we need and we should be fine going forward uh our economy should jump and uh we'll go from there so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll see you all next time bye